All right, here we go. Ghost of Glades tournament, hole one. I got some feedback there. All right, that's better. All right, so this is just a video, more or less, for me to take notes. This is how I kind of review my opening round gameplay. Uh, I will give a disclaimer. I am not the best player. You're not going to see the absolute best gameplay here. And a lot of this play is based on the guide that Golf Clash Tommy does. He does a few. I usually wait until the actual day to try and see, you know, kind of what he's doing with the wind adjustments. So I kind of like watching that play through. So I would highly recommend that. Uh, I also use the Golf Clash Caddy app for iOS. That's how I do my ring adjustments that you just saw there. And so what you're going to see on, um, on, on these videos here, the way I like to do this, I like to show the hole that I'm on, the ball I'm using, and I like to show the clubs that I'm using. And then the bottom right, you will see the little wind icon with a percentage, and that is really the biggest thing that I'm looking for when I'm watching Tommy's videos, but I have a hard time getting it sometimes is knowing uh, the adjustments that I need to make for rings. So uh, this is kind of just my guide to make sure I remember how much adjustments I should be doing. Again, that, that kind of, that refers to the elevation, right? So if you're shooting downhill, you'll add 10, 20%, whatever it is to your shot. If you're shooting uphill, the ball is in the air a little bit long, uh, not as long, so you will reduce the adjustments by 10 20 percent whatever it is so to me that's kind of the hardest part of of these tournaments uh, it's nice to know obviously which direction to play like okay you don't play the left fairway here you play the right fairway so that's that's kind of step one uh, but the biggest step for me step two is again knowing those adjustments so i've got those recorded and on all of the different holes for each shot uh, what that adjustment is a lot of times it's 10 percent or so so this hole uh this is where the bad kind of started for me i uh, I, I made the proper adjustment here plus 10 percent, but i didn't hit it perfect in this hole i've played this hole a lot of times in tour play and i know better if you uh if you don't hit it perfect you're in <laughs> you're in the world of hurt here so you'll see I'll go into the sand, you know, I don't lose a ball, but I go into the sand and that removes any eagle opportunity on this hole. Now I'm going to show my opponent's second shot here. And again, that's only because I want to show the, uh, the adjustment for when. So it's plus 10 plus 15% is what Tommy was saying. I did not get a chance to actually do that on this hole. So I'm a little nervous about it, but, uh, my opponent's shot was not what you want to do there, but I did want to include that wind adjustment for that shot. All right, hole four. This hole was an absolute nightmare for me. So there's there's actually nothing to see here. I saw Tommy do 0% adjustment. Uh, you'll see I actually hit it great uh, on this on this particular shot. So I just, I lose the ball in the water. And this one, this hole gave me trouble trying to make those the wind adjustments with the tree there too. So this hole just in general really kind of messed me up. Uh, my opponent used a big topper. I may consider doing that uh, in assuming I uh, qualify, which it looks like I will, despite my um, kind of not, nah, I didn't shoot the score I wanted to, but I think I'll qualify. So I may try a big topper here. My big topper is only level three, so I don't know if that'll get there. Uh, and, I'm, and again, I'm just including my opponent's shot here. He went to the sand, but I'm including this because I want to remind myself that the second shot, uh, assuming I can get it on the fairway, is going to be a 0% wind adjustment and ideally a thorn shot. So if I can just figure out that bounce and get myself in the fairway, uh, I'd like to think I could could have a, a thorn shot there. Now hole five, uh, this is a par three. This is a 20% wind adjustment. And then with the wind adjustment here, I, I aimed a little bit shorter than where I actually really wanted to go to try and account for the fact that the ball guideline is not quite doing justice to how far the ball is going to travel because it's not taking into account the uh, all the tailwind here so it looks like i might go a little short there but you'll see uh, on this shot it's actually just right and again that's because I'm, I'm aiming just a little bit shorter than i typically would to account for uh, the tailwind that i've got so i hit it perfect here uh, i think my adjustments were actually pretty good could have been a little bit better obviously for a hole in one but this one just comes 
Comes down nicely, curls back in. Uh, Could have gone uh, maybe a little bit less power and a little bit more to the right would have been perfect there. But this hole, I went with the, the quarterback for a little more accuracy. Uh, I'm not going for anything crazy here, even though I do have tailwind. Uh, I'm just going to lay up. And then I'm going to take a sniper shot after the layup. I'm using a lot of kingmakers here. I don't think that's necessary. But man, the, the, this is my first attempt at an expert tournament. And the wins are something else. So I'm taking all the wind resistance I can get. And I really like katanas. I think katanas would work well for this, uh, for this tournament. But the, uh, the little bit extra wind resistance that I get with the Kingmakers makes it worth it for me. I have enough of them that it's not too big of a deal. So I've been using them. And then I got a great chance here, a great opportunity with the Sniper. So laying up, and even if you have a Sniper, you can lay up and play it safe and still have a really good look at the Albatross here. I mean, this is a pretty... I don't want to say straightforward shot because it's none of these shots on expert are easy because you have to make a lot of adjustments. The big thing here is minus 10% my adjustment. So I'm actually shooting a tiny bit uphill. So instead of actually adjusting nine rings, it'll be a little bit less. And you'll see that here in just a moment. So, uh, you know, I'm working with it here just a little bit to try and make sure that arrow is pointing perfectly north. And then I make my ring adjustments. And then the goal is just to hit it perfect. So. Let's see what happens. Perfect shot with the Sniper 8, which is such a great club. And again, a Kingmaker, a little bit of wind resistance there. And I'm able to make up the uh, make up for the, the poor play that I did on hole 3 and 4. 4 especially. 4 is just an absolute nightmare. And 3, uh, I believe I got a birdie, but I really needed an eagle there. So the Albatross, I think... Uh, may have saved me in this tournament it may have saved me so this shot going to the left add 10 percent 10 percent seems to be i mean i don't know i might want to take it just a tie i mean maybe like 12 or 13 percent like this was this was close you'll see this shot so i did 10 percent did my wind adjustment i hit it perfect but this ball barely barely hit the fairway and kept going so that's uh that's a little scary for me so, uh, but then it, you know, went a little too right too. So I got to work on my adjustments a little bit. Hole seven, try and get myself in a place where I can use, you know, a nice short iron or something instead of the rough iron. This, this is, it's not the worst thing in the world to be in the rough on the right. Uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, you definitely don't want to be in the sand on the left. So if you've got to mess up, you probably want to be in the rough, not the water, obviously, but uh, a rough iron shot from here is not that difficult. I'm just not great at hitting those perfect. So the chance of getting the eagle here is diminished by a lot when I hit it into the rough. So obviously that's a bummer, but uh, you'll see here, this is a pretty straightforward shot out of the rough. Not too many obstacles. Don't have to do anything weird with the curl. It's 0% wind adjustment. So uh, I can't quite get it perfect, but this will be just fine. I'll drop in nice and close and I'll get the easy birdie here. My distance is actually right on with that. So my, my, uh, my read was actually pretty good there. All right, hole eight, another par three. I actually, I like this par three, 0% wind adjustment. It's just pretty, I mean, again, kind of a straightforward hole. A lot of these holes are pretty straightforward, believe it or not, which is why, well, I'm sure you do believe it. That's why you're seeing, it looks like par is hovering around minus 13, at least in my, you know, my bracket is not quite, I, I think I got lucky in my bracket. I got uh, minus 11. I think I'm gonna actually pass through. So I think I got lucky with my bracket. I was aiming for minus 13. I thought that was that was gonna be par. That was my goal. Uh, I could have had, obviously, since I got the albatross, if everything else had gone the way I was hoping for, I could have had a minus 14, but uh, I gotta figure out that hole number four. I'm pretty nervous about it for Thursday. But yeah, this is a straightforward shot, 0% adjustment with the sniper you just i mean you can just really dial it in i'm still a little bit too much to the left i gotta work on that adjustments a little more aim just a tiny bit more right to make up for that but that is just fine hole nine i mean this is the toughest one and i actually made a major error on this hole too but it was on my second shot so this shot was fine 
Again, 10% adjustment and playing to the right side of the fairway. There's not a lot of wiggle room. You really got to hit it perfect here. Um, and, and that's really the case for all your shots, especially in tournament play. You just got to hit the ball perfect. And the extra mile especially, <laughs> the accuracy is not great. Uh, I do not hit it perfect here. I hit it great. And that's, uh, I was extremely nervous when this ball was in the air. Uh, fortunately, uh, I was still able to make it. It actually probably worked out better for me that I hit it great. Because uh, that's that's the drive I was hoping for. That gives me a chance to get on the green in two. Here's where uh, I made a, a big mental error. So there's a ton of tailwind here. So again, like I was talking about on one of the other earlier holes, you know, I I, I want to aim a little short here to make up for all that tailwind because the ball guideline is going to be compacted a little bit. Um, I do not do that. I actually don't do any adjustments here for whatever reason. I got a little too confident, didn't do any adjustments, just kind of guessed and did a, a pretty big curl shot here. Didn't hit it perfect, but it doesn't even matter because it's just going way too far. And this is a huge, I mean, that's just, that's an unforced error. There's really no excuse for that. So uh, that's a tough chip for me because this in the rough, I didn't make it, but that was the Ghost of Glaze tournament. Again, these are just kind of notes for me, but uh, hopefully you'll find these useful too. If you do, uh, leave a comment and let me know. Thanks.